Welcome to the Positive Pants Podcast. Mindset, motivation, and inspiration to help you find your positive pants. Let go of negative thinking and stop living for the weekend with your host, Fran Excel. Welcome to the show. As always, I'm Fran Excel Mindset Coach, helping you find your very own pair of positive pants so you can get out your own way and live a life that you really love. So today I'm a little bit excited about what I'm going to talk about because it's something that I sort of talk around a lot. I've never put them all in one place. So today I am talking you through the top seven inevitable entrepreneurial mindset gremlins. These pesky little inevitable entrepreneurial mindset gremlins. They can really, really hold you back, keep you stuck in self-sabotage, stop you from taking the action that you know you need to and want to. We all know how getting stuck in procrastination, frustration, feeling overwhelmed, full of self-doubt, comparing ourselves to everyone else while thinking, who am I to do this, can and will hold us back and stop us from taking the action that we know and that we know that we want to and need to. We also know that we are our own worst enemies. We're in our way. massively and we self-sabotage every step of the way we all have a tendency to do it at some point as they say new level new devil it's not your fault you've trained yourself to think that way you've learned it all right but guess what you can learn to be the opposite if you want to be it's exactly what you know whatever you want to be and whoever you want to be you can learn that but your thoughts are not who you are And this doesn't have to be your story anymore. We can tame those gremlins, help you find your positive pants, and get you out of self-sabotage and into action. All we've got to do is I've just got to introduce you to the most common ones first so you know what and who you're dealing with and how to tame them. So without further ado, the number one is imposter syndrome. The who are you to think you can do this? You're a fraud. They're going to find out that gremlin, a very, very pesky one, but a very tameable one. What I want you to realize is that everyone deals with this one. Everyone. Well, at least 70% of the population and everyone who tries to achieve anything big. Here are just a few of the big names who have openly talked about dealing with this. Sheryl Sandberg, Tom Hanks, Chris Martin, Meryl Streep, Maya Angelou, Penelope Cruz, Emma Watson, Tina Fey, Jodie Foster. Do you, do you need a few more? Oh, all right. Okay, fine. Michelle Pfeiffer, Robert Pattinson, um, J-Lo, my girl crush, Natalie Portman. Get it? I think you get the message. I will stop now. But there are tons, 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 tons more. It's such a big one, but it gets us every single time. This is going to come up. All of those people are incredible and incredibly talented, and they still deal with this gremlin. All right. So just acknowledge that it is going to come up at some point. Usually every single point where you're launching something new or you're leveling in some way or you're putting yourself out there, going outside of your comfort zone. But panic not, my friend. There is a way through and it starts simply with naming it and then listing all the reasons that you're not an imposter. Okay. if you want more information on imposter syndrome, I've got a whole other episode on that. It's episode 17. Um, But if you, if you just have that little niggle coming up in the back of your brain and you go, oh, hang on a minute, this isn't actually a conversation with myself, this is imposter syndrome, even that in itself will ease the pain. Okay, so number two is comparisonitis. Ugh. Comparison really is the thief of joy. So you will tie yourself in knots with this gremlin unless you stop doing it. Usually what you're doing is you're comparing your 10th step to someone else's 10,000th. It's often because we're frustrated that we aren't taking the action that we know we need to in order to get where we want to go. And then what that leads to is resentment of other people's success. All right. And then what happens is you get all bitter and twisty. And then you continue to self-sabotage and not take the action that you know will get you out there. So (laughs) you can see how this is going to work. As my friend Heather Gray would say, just stay on your side of the road. Remember that you never have the full picture of what someone else has or hasn't got or is or isn't doing. So don't assume you do. How much lighter would you feel if you just got on with what you were doing? So you can see how possible it is for you. 
the, these huge things that you're trying to achieve, the evidence is there. Other people have done it. Why not you? Stop saying, how could it be me? Like, why not you? Just trust that it's possible for you and then do it your way, not someone else's. Okay? So number three is overwhelm. Overwhelm is a pain in the bum kind of a gremlin, but actually one of the easiest to sort. It's all about getting really honest with ourselves and our self-imposed deadlines. And I'm awful for this. You know, I'm a mindset coach. I know these tips and tricks. It doesn't mean that I don't do it ever, but I know how to stop myself when I start. You know, it's all about prioritizing and getting organized. So often it's actually really easy with everything down in front of you to see where you're potentially going wrong. So firstly, stop looking at the big, overwhelming, scary task and break it down into manageable pieces with a realistic timeline rather than the bonkers one you've given yourself. It's not so scary now, right? I've done exactly the same thing with our house. I was thinking, oh, we can get it all done within a week. And then I realized it takes a whole day to paint some doors. And then I know that my timeline needs to change a bit, a little bit. You need to adjust and adapt. But also, we do like to busy ourselves being busy. So just stop it. Be honest with yourself about your to-do list. What's going to move the needle fastest for you? What is a non-negotiable versus nice to have? What has to be done today rather than next week? I've got a ton more on this, and that is episode 19, all about getting from overwhelm into action. So check that one out. And number four, my favorite, you hear me talk about this a lot, and this is certainly something that pretty much everyone in my group struggles with, procrastination. One of my faves. I've totally got you covered here. There are several main reasons that we procrastinate and don't do the things that we really want to and need to. And I've got a tip to get you through each one along with a self-coaching workbook to get you through the sticky times. You are not a procrastinator, but you have a habit of procrastinating. Identify all the main ways you do it. This will help with the awareness piece and help you build that discipline to get you out of it. So what I want you to do is go to the notes and download, if you haven't got it already, your procrastination buster. It's so practical. Don't procrastinate over doing it. <laughs> But go and do it because it is really, really helpful because when you create that awareness for yourself, that's the first step to creating any change. And then I've got the self-coaching sheet to get you through it. Okay, but if you do want more on that, check out episode two of the Positive Pants podcast. Um, and there's loads in there to help get you through it. Now, number five is a bad one. Self-doubt. I used to be plagued by self-doubt like really bad. <laughs> it held me back from doing anything that I wanted to. I mean, I wouldn't even go anywhere on my own. You know, it was ridiculous. I was so crippled by self-doubt that I, I literally just stayed in my own little bu bubble with nothing ever changing. But please notice that I said used to hold me back. This is a 100% tameable mindset gremlin, even though it doesn't feel like it. it. Just takes a little bit of time to break down a lifetime of coding in your brain about who you feel you are and who you feel you're not. So it's it's breaking down that lifetime of coding of you being feeling like you're having a negative conversation with yourself in your head. Does that sound familiar? It's not you. It's not you. Next time you hear it talking to you negatively or telling you that you can't do something, this is a little NLP technique. You can either give it a name or a silly voice like Daffy Duck, and you will st soon stop feeling so attached to it. Stop feeling so hurt by it, and it will make what it says so much less believable for you. It sounds really silly, but honestly, it works, because most of the time, it's either our own voices in our heads, which is what leads us to believe we're having a conversation with ourselves, or it's somebody that we respect, like a parent or a loved one. All of these different things. If you can shift that around, if you can give it a name, if you can give it a silly voice, just start to notice these things and see how much that that can work. Your brain's going to play these tricks on you. Every single time you want to step out your comfort zone, it will try and keep you stuck. Thinks it's doing you a favor and protecting you from bears and saber tooth tigers. Yes, really. But actually, it's only holding you back. See, the more that you doubt your ability to do something, the less likely you are to even try. It actively stops you from taking action. But once you realize that when you do step out of your comfort zone and take action and nothing bad happens, 
you're showing your brain it's fine it's all good and then this is the space where you grow in confidence you get braver you start to back yourself because you're giving yourself the evidence that it that it needs so getting outside your comfort zone is pure magic i'm always saying that unicorns and rainbows live outside your comfort zone genuinely start doing it start looking for ways to push yourself out of your comfort zone because i can't tell you how much you will grow exponentially if you want any more tips on on that one um i have another one so let's go with how to be more confident go for episode three and that will really help you because a lot of self-doubt it is confidence but go to episode three and listen to that one so number six is fear right fear particularly pesky but again tameable what are you afraid of failure success judgment being wrong all of the above remember i mentioned the part of the brain that protects you from those bears and those saber-toothed tigers <laughs> that's your amygdala and it is very close to the memory center of our brains. Now, I'm not gonna to get too technical here, but the problem with that is that the brain doesn't distinguish between what's real and what's imagined, which is why visualization is so powerful, okay? So what happens is when you've catastrophized, you know, maybe you're feeling some anxiety or whatever it may be, when you've catastrophized about the worst case scenario, you've had all the same physiological and chemical reactions in your brain as if it already happened. And the memory center of your brain is your hippocampus, and that stores that memory in inverted commas, which will activate the fear center of the brain every time you go anywhere near taking action towards that, and you are near towards taking action on what you want. So what works one way will work the other, which is where visualization comes in. So what I want you to do is start to picture the best case scenario. Really allow yourself to feel the feelings as if it's already happened. You've got that article published, you know, you're on Thrive Global, you did your first Facebook Live, you've got that book deal, you've got that speaking gig, all of those different things, anything that you want to do. Just visualize the best case scenario for that. Remember that fear is just false evidence appearing real. It's not happened yet. You have way more control over this than you think. And for more ways to tame that gremlin, go to episode 11. So number seven. I've saved the best for last here because it's negativity, okay? Now, this is the big one, but actually it's one that not enough people focus on, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. That is why I'm always talking about finding your positive pants. If you have a negative, if, if you're negative in your outlook or your thought processes and the way you feel and behave towards yourself, it will affect your ability to succeed. If you look at one situation negatively, it's how you look at all situations because you've trained your brain that negativity or pessimism, that sort of way of protecting yourself is what I used to call it, is the path of least resistance and it becomes how you behave in all areas of your life, okay? But I know all this to be true because it was me. I was, as I've said before, Eeyore on a bad day. Let me tell you, <laughs> it is the fastest way to quit it's the fastest way to give yourself excuses and the fastest way to not believe in yourself. So you need to nip it in the bud and you can nip it in the bud. Remember, happiness doesn't come from success. It's the other way around. Success comes from happiness. Think about all those people that have got what you've that, that got what you want. OK, Sean Acor, another one of my favorite, favorite authors and um, he's a positive psychologist. And he wrote The Happiness Advantage. If you haven't read it, check it out because it's amazing. It will explain this in a, in a lot more detail. And the next thing to know is that gratitude is literally the antidote to fear and anxiety. And it is a great place to start when you are on the road to becoming more positive. OK, start with simple gratitude practice, regular gratitude practice. So you need to be making sure that you have these positive emotions running through your veins. You will be more resilient. You will look for the lesson and the opportunity rather than the struggle or the threat. You will believe in yourself or your ability. You will see obstacles as forks in the road leading you down a better path. That's how I look at everything these days. My favorite mug. Sometimes on the way to the dream, you get lost and find a better one. And I live by that. Anything that lands in my way, it's fine. It's cool. I know I can handle it. I know it's probably going to lead me down a better, better route, you know, to something that wouldn't have happened had the negative thing not happened. You'll know that there is no such thing as failure, only lessons to learn. 
And when you can go through growing your business with this attitude, then you'll honestly be unstoppable. And if you don't, as I always say, you'll feel like you're pushing water uphill. The ups and downs will be hard to bet. That roller coaster, that inevitable roller coaster. It's a ride. It's there to be enjoyed. You know, it will be hard. Um, and if you want to know any more about why I think finding that your positive pants in business is so important, then definitely go to episode 20. But how much lighter do you think you'll feel with this way of thinking? These are all tameable, all fixable. You just need to shift how you think. Okay, it's not so easy to do on your own. But that's what I'm here for. Please understand that there is nothing wrong with you if you're feeling any of these. They are an inevitable part of the process of trying to achieve anything big, especially when you're going so far outside your comfort zone and what's normal for you. It's you're like in a foreign foreign land, okay? And you need to know how to navigate that. But when you can understand why and where they're coming from and how to push through them, it'll all feel so much more easy. So much easier. We've just got to find your positive pants. Positive emotions will neutralize the effect of all of these things on the amygdala. It'll calm it down. So it'll allow you to take the action that you want and need to, and then you'll be unstoppable. Um, and obviously make sure that you are downloading your procrastination buster and using it. Listen to the other episodes that are related to this because they will really, really help you get a well-rounded view of how to push through these. So yeah, that's it. The top seven inevitable mindset gremlins. These things will always come up and it's time and I want people to realize that they are not alone in these thoughts and feelings. It is part and parcel of it, but so much easier to navigate than we allow ourselves to realize. I hope that was really useful for you and as always, I will see you next week.